Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischl. This is going to be episode 179 of my poker vlog. For this session, I played at the Tampa Hard Rock. I have a bunch of fun hands to go over, but before I get into it, I'm happy to announce a new partnership with the Bink Poker app. Rooted in the scientifically backed principle that tracking results and refining preflop strategy is the fastest way to boost win rate, Bink is an all-in-one solution to reaching your potential. Track your sessions, dive deep into analytics, and pinpoint exactly what's working and what's not. There's also exclusive access to 200 plus free preflop charts and cutting edge training tools. So really happy to be partnered with them. Tracking your stats as well as some of the training tools they have can help make your game better. That's what I'm gonna be using going forward. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. First hand of note. When we arrive early in the morning at the Hard Rock, we're only playing four-handed currently, where we look down at pocket aces, could be the start of a good day. The button decides to limp the $5, small blind limps as well. I am not going to limp sitting in the big blind I raised to $20, and to this bet, the button folds, but the small blind calls a second time. So we're heads up to a flop, which comes queen, eight, six, diamond, diamond club. The small blind leads on this board for $20. I don't really see how I can fold here. Raising does seem like a possibility, but feel like the nut advantage is heavily in my opponent's favor. They have all the sets, all the two pairs. Think my raising range does not have pocket sixes and eight six all too often. So I decided to just make the call and the turn is the five of hearts. To so this card, my opponent bets $20 again. I think the flop lead could be strong, sometimes two pair of sets. The consistent betting leads me to believe my opponent has a one pair hand or a draw at best. So now it's going to be the chance where I choose to raise. Aces should be good. I can get value from any queen X and some diamond draws. So I raise it up to $60. My opponent doesn't take too long before making the call. And the river is the 10 of diamonds. My opponent checks to me. Going into today, I told myself that I would go for thin value in a lot of spots that I normally wouldn't. And I told myself that going into this river card and then the 10 of diamonds hit. And I'm just like, this is one of the worst cards I could see. The flush draw gets there. A bunch of two pairs, Jack nine, 10, eight, queen, 10, just so many variety of hands just beat me on this river card as well as any two diamonds. Having the ace of diamonds, I do think you can go for some thin value at this point, but you're pretty much only targeting like queen at nine specifically at that point. So I choose to take the passive route, check this one back. Think if I bet a worse hand's gonna fold almost all the time at this point and only better hands would call. So when I check my opponent has eight, nine off suit, a hand that I'm beating that I don't have to face any difficult decisions on the river with, but if I bet, I'm not sure this hand calls all too often. If they're good, they might turn their hand into a bluff with a nine blocker. Either way, a little bit passive, but we win the first hand of the day with aces. I win a small one before I look down at queen nine of hearts in the big blind with a cutoff straddle to get back into the game. The button decides to limp as well as a small blind. I'm going to raise this one up. Suited queen nine. Seems better than a lot of limpers ranges, so we're going to bump it up to $45. To this bet, the cutoff folds, the button decides to tag along, and the small blind decides to fold. So we end up going heads up to a flop, which comes queen nine four with two diamonds. Flopping two pair, decent sized pot. I'm just going to bet this time. I think I've been too passive in the past, so we're going to bet our top two pair. I start out with a $50 bet. My opponent decides to make the call. Love to see it. Hopefully he has ace, queen, queen, jack, queen, 10, any of that stuff that's going to pay off. Multiple bets. When the turn is the nine of clubs, we now don't even have to worry about diamond flush draws or jack 10, but we're not going to stop betting here. My opponent has a queen. He's never folding. If he has like tens or jacks, he might talk himself into calling. And with a second flush draw introduced, if my opponent has like jack 10 or clubs or diamonds, he's probably going to call another bet. So I throw out $100, but this seems to be too much. My opponent decides to fold. Oh, that's too bad. You and we win another pot, but possibly could have made more by checking turn and maybe inducing or betting river. Everything seems to be easier in hindsight, but in reality, we win a pot and we keep moving forward. Next interesting hand, we look down at ace king of clubs. Early position decides to raise it up to $15. I'm on the button, so we're not going to just call this one. We make it $45, standard 3x3 bet. Only the initial raise are called, so we end up going heads up to a flop, which comes 10-3-3 with one club. Well, if we are betting when we have two pair, we're going to bet when we just have over cards and back to our clubs. 
Additionally, my opponent should miss this board a lot, so think that a C bet is warranted, especially in a three bet pot. If I had Queens Plus, I would definitely put out a bet here. So 45 will be the wager. Plenty of face card and clubs that can give us two barrel opportunities where we don't even make a pair. But 45 is enough. My opponent folds, and we are three for three at the start of the day. Next hand of note. I'm in the cutoff. An early position player raised $20. There's one middle position player that calls. I call with ace three of diamonds in the cutoff. Happy to play this one multi-way. Happy to flush or flush someone. The button tags along too. So we end up going four ways to a flop, which comes ace king five with one diamond. Not quite the board I'm looking for. If any of my opponents have an ace, it's definitely a better one than mine. But the preflop aggressor and the middle position player both check to me. I think betting here makes some sense. I have top pair, which should be good a lot of the time. I expect my opponent had like ace, 10, ace, jack. They would bet this board. So I'm going to bet small here. Start out with a $25 wager. The button decides to call less than ideal. Only player with position on me, but the turn is the nine of spades. Thinking this opponent would have three bet if they had ace, jack, ace, queen, or better. I think I have the best hand here a lot of the time. I think my opponents might just call down with a king, maybe a middling pocket pair, maybe even like queen 10 will will call chasing their gut shots. So I throw out $55 on the turn card and this one will end it. We win another hand, my opponent folds and we are getting some momentum in this day. Following that, we're back to a four-handed table. It seems like people are getting up and leaving. It's kind of struggling to get the game going, but either way, we're on the button with King 10 off suit. I raised to $15. The big blind decides to defend, so we're heads up to a flop. My opponent checks dark, and the flop is 9-4-3 rainbow. Not sure I can rep a ton on this board unless I have ace-9, 9-10, or pocket-9. It's kind of hard for me to have any type of hand here. So I decided to check this one back. I have overs, have backdoor straight draw. Definitely not giving up by any means, but this one I think is better played as a check back. The turn is the eight of clubs, and now my opponent goes pot with it 30. Because we've been shorthanded, we've been battling back and forth. I don't really expect my opponent to have a hand here all too often. I expect him to have like complete air a lot of the time, or maybe like 6 7, maybe queen jack, jack 10, maybe just ace high. So I'm going to call this one, go for the old float, and try to steal it on the river. But the river is the nine of spades. And now my opponent bets $75. Hey, what the hell are you talking about? Why, why is it so much? And I give my opponent zero credit for having a hand here. He had been bluffing a few times. It is really hard to make three of a kind, and I am one of the few players who would check a top pair, top kicker some of the time, so I theoretically could have trips here. When my opponent bets 75, I'm going to raise, and I'm going to raise the sizing that I would choose if I had a 9. It's going to be 175. Thinking for some reason my opponent had an 8, it's hard for him to hold on, but also hard for him to even bet 75 on this river. Like, the bet, he's saying he has nuts or nothing, and there's a lot of nothing available and not a whole lot of nuts. And 175 seems to make my opponent a believer. He folds pretty quickly. I think he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, and I was just in a bluffing mood. Well, we looked down at King-10 offsuit again, this time from the cutoff. In this hand, the under-the-gun player raises to $20. I choose to just call. The table's filled up. I get to play in position. Seems decent. And the big blind side's a call as well. So we end up going three ways to a flop of King, Queen, Deuce with two clubs. We do have the 10 of clubs, which is pretty nice holding. Pre-flop aggressor decides to continue for $30. I did not flop top pair to fold to a single pot, half pot size bet, so I make the call. The big blind calls as well. Not too happy to see this go three ways, but when the turn is the four of spades, it seems like a pretty big brick, and now it checks all the way to me. I'm not going to check this one. I think the pre-flop aggressor can just have an, a C bet with a variety of holdings that d didn't connect. Maybe ace jack, ace 10. 10-9, Jack-10, things like that, which my hand gains a ton of value by protecting against those holdings. The big blind could easily just have a random queen or even a worse king at some frequency, and we're ahead of all of those ranges, so we're going to bet $80. But you've made some terrific suggestions, and I'm going to jot them down. It turns out either my image is really good at this table, or both players had a whole lot of nothing because they both fold very quickly, and we take down another pot. Next hand of note. With three limps, I'm in the small blind with ace-10 offsuit. I raised to $20. Seems to be reasonable. Don't want to just limp this one. Would love to thin the field. Just take down the dead money or build a pot in case our hand hits. To this bet, only the cutoff size of calls. So we're heads up to a flop to which our hand does hit. The flop is ace-10-7 rainbow. Today we flopped two pairs a few times, so actually running well feels nice for a change. Again, the theme of today is not be passive, not check. So we're just going to bet because we have two pair. Not really expecting to get action all too often because we have so much board locked up. But I bet $20 because sometimes you just have to bet when you have top two pair. 
shockingly, my opponent raises to $60. I've recently become a fan of flop three betting as bluffs a lot of the time. I would do this if I had like eight, nine, sometimes ace X with a backdoor flush draw. So we're going to raise this when we have two pair. Maybe my opponent has eight, nine or king, queen or queen jack or Maybe we have the dream cooler spot where my opponent has 10-7 as they are a limp caller, so it's not unreasonable. So I'm going to 3-bet this one to 160. Find to fold out any gut shot equity they have. If my opponent has a random ace, they're probably going to call and a random 10. I've been 3-outed and 5-outed many times in the last few sessions, so happy to get the money in now while we're confident we're ahead and don't have a very clear idea of what turn cards will be bad for us. But to $160, my opponent decides to fold. So I guess they were just making a move on this flop and got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Next, interesting hand. With two limps, I'm on the button with ace three of diamonds again. I raised it $20. Both limpers decide to call. So we end up going three ways to a flop of king, nine, four, club, club, diamond. On this board, when it checks to me, I'm just going to bet here. People have been giving me a lot of credibility. They've been folding. So we're going to go two thirds on this one. We got a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. Feels decent. I bet $40. The first player decides to fold and then the middle player decides to call. So definitely going to throw in the second barrel on any diamond or straight card. But we get a very bad one in the four of hearts. And now my opponent checks to me. Well, I guess I'm still ahead of like queen jack off suit, five, six of clubs, seven X of clubs. There are a few hands that I'm beating. I think I'm going to check this one back and see what my opponent wants to do on the river. And the river is the 10 of spades. And my opponent checks to me. In this spot, I think my opponent just has a 9 here almost always. Maybe 7s and 8s are also in there at some frequency. But he never really has a king here. And if my opponent also has like ace x of clubs that's higher than mine. It'd be pretty disastrous to let him see a showdown with that. So I bet $100. think this gets a lot of his 9s to fold. I think as played, I could have queen jack some of the time. I could have any king might check this turn and go for value on the river. I think my line is pretty credible. I could have ace 10 some of the time. So $100 is the bet which my opponent snap calls just about with 8-9 off suit. Just got Reem. Who wants to start drinking? Me! <laughs> so couldn't get this guy to be a believer. In my mind, a 9 was the most likely hand I was trying to get to fold. Sometimes just knowing what your opponent has isn't enough. They'll just call anyway. Next hand of note. I'm in the small blind with Jack eight of diamonds with two limps. I raised to $20. The big blind folds both limpers side to call. So we're going three ways to a flop of queen eight, five rainbow with one diamond. As I'm first act, I think I want to put a bet here, thin the field. My opponents were limp callers, so I think the best queen they could ever have in range is like queen three suited, maybe queen six suited, queen nine off suit, maybe limp calls. I'm not really sure, but I am pretty sure we can rule out ace queen and king queen and the strongest ones, which I can easily have betting $20. Unfortunately for me, the player to my direct right hadn't played a hand in like an hour and a half. And he also was watching a movie on his phone, actually put the movie down to limp this hand and then limp call. So kind of sketchy. I actually think he could have a decent hand some of the time. But for my $25 C bet, both players decide to call less than ideal. The turn is the two of hearts, biggest brick ever. And I think we're just going to keep betting this one. If my opponent had six, seven, they're probably going to give up now. Maybe nine, seven, 10, nine. Additionally, having Jack-8 specifically, I beat like 7, 8, 8, 9. So there are hands that I'm beating here. So I bet $75. Still trying to rep some strong queens here. Haven't thrown out too many two barrels without having it. This one's kind of a merge. But for 75, both players decide to fold. So two streets of betting is enough to get it done here. We win another hand. Which brings us to the final hand of note. I look down at Jack Nine of Hearts in the cutoff. Under the gun raises to twenty dollars. One middle position player calls. I'm definitely in there with suited gappers in relative position. The button decides to call as well, so we end up going four ways to a flop of King Queen Three Rainbow with one heart. Well, I'm probably gonna have to just fold if my opponent throws out a large C bet. But the under the gun player and the middle position player check to me. I think this is the green light for me to bet here. Like, neither one should have a strong king or strong queen, and I guess I could. Plenty of two-barrel opportunity with any heart, jack, or nine. A ten would be probably ideal, but kind of unlikely. So I throw out $40. To this bet, the button calls, 
and the pre-flop aggressor under the gun player calls as well so not feeling too comfortable going three ways to the turn but the turn is the ten of diamonds okay oh my god we actually bink the second nuts and our opponents check to us again well i didn't bet on a gut shot draw to check when the draw gets there so i continue for 75 dollars the button calls love to see it then the under the gun player raises to 275 well i guess my opponent could have ace jack he has the under the gun raiser to 20 dollars and then check calls that board so it's not impossible as ace jack i do block it which feels kind of good i guess backdoor diamonds came in maybe he has like queen x of diamonds maybe he has like ace x of diamonds hopefully he has queen 10 and has just four outs but if he has ace jack it's just not my day but i am all in 640 will be the bet if he has it he has it it's only 300 ish more for him to call button folds and now my opponent's in the tank when we fade the snap call we know he doesn't have ace jack so now we're rooting for a call think he has like two pair or maybe a set of tens a lot of holdings that are very strong but also have very few outs to improve and after a significantly long tank my opponent shows king jack and then eventually folds for just 300 more dollars good discipline fold here actually happy to see it because knowing how i've been running lately my opponent was probably just gonna spike an ace or a nine for a chop but him folding gives me the pot awards me a win for the day all of that is happily accepted on this day we are in the game for 800 dollars out of the game for 12 12 which is a profit of 412 dollars across three hours equates to 137 dollars an hour or 27 big blinds an hour again here you can see my results from the bink app link in my description if you're interested in downloading it help elevate your game pretty happy with how i played today won a few hands got a river raise bluff through an issue i seem to be running into is when i just play a hand straight forward and bet a bunch i get a lot of folds and then leads me to start playing more passively and try to lure people into traps with some top pairs and whatnot and that leads you to play just some some little too passive bad line poker so definitely planning on keeping the aggression factor up going forward thank you for watching i appreciate all the support and i will see you on the next one